we shall be looking specifically and more precisely at spiritual authority, but we'll also look at other components. So authority is what we will be speaking to you on. And so our intention this morning is not to do too much preaching, but to teach and to speak to you. Because the subject of authority is a very, very sensitive one, but it's also very delicate and something that needs to be uh, spoken of with precision. In a, in a young church like this one, one of the things that can be quite of a challenge is the issue of authority. And so I sensed in my spirit that the Lord wanted me to minister to you. I was once young, and uh, I know as a young person, you have so much going on inside you, and there's so much at your disposal. But let's look to the Word of God quickly. Uh, we shall read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 28 to 29. And then we'll go to uh, chapter 21 and read verse 23. You can give it to me in the NLT. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, that is the Sermon on the Mount, the people were astonished at his doctrine. All right, verse 29. For he taught with a real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious laws. For he taught with a real authority. In the, in the original version, it simply says he taught with authority. Unlike the teachers of the religious law, there was something in the way that Jesus spoke and dispensed the truth to the audience that came to listen to him. When you read the entire context of what Jesus was teaching on, it was the components and the aspects of the kingdom of God right from chapter 5 and then he lays out a number of issues and aspects certain components that relate to those who are citizens of the kingdom who they are what their characteristics is supposed to be what their nature what their outlook and disposition is when you read the entire Two chapters, chapter 5, 6, and 7. And so he spoke with such power, such convincing authority that the Bible says they were amazed and astonished. Obviously, the comparative phrase there that says, not like the religious leaders of the law, is that these religious leaders who comprised of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes had some information about the law of God, but they lacked authority in the manner that they taught the, the law of God. There was something that was missing because what they taught did not resonate with who they really were. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. They were speaking something that was not part of them. And so the people were amazed at the manner in which Jesus spoke. Let's go to, uh, what chapter did I say? Chapter 21. Okay. Let's go to chapter 21. Are you in the house? Yes. Okay. Verse 23, let's read the word of God. 
when Jesus returned to the temple and began teaching, notice the leading priests and elders came up to him. They demanded, by what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right? So right there in that phrase, we are given the whole aspect of where authority or how authority comes about. It is a right that is given to someone. And so these religious leaders were questioning the source of Jesus' authority. Obviously, they realized that whatever he did, he did with a sense not of privilege, but of right. Because you see, you cannot dispense and operate in authority if it has not been given to you as a right. No one assumes a position of authority of their own initiative. Are you with me? Yes. Are we together? Yes. I'm laying a foundation. Very important. These are truths that you need to grasp very early as a young person, as a young church. Because as you grow and you begin to move in the direction that God wants to take you, uh, there are elements that begin to surface where people begin to think that they are also gifted, called, and empowered, and they would like to go and start their own ministries. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Okay. So, they ask him where he got this authority. Let's go on, verse 24. I tell you by what authority I do these things. I would tell you by what authority I do these things. If you answer one question, Jesus replied, did John's authority to baptize come from heaven or was it merely human? Now let's pause for a while there because we are teaching. So we need to dissect and look at the implication of the phrases of scripture. So here, what these religious people are in answers, uh, what Jesus was establishing is that authority, real authority, true authentic authority comes from heaven. Are you hearing me? Yes. Real authority is something that comes from heaven. Amen. Amen. And then he asked us, he asked this question, was, was, was it from heaven or was it merely human? Now, what Jesus is establishing there is that there is a fictitious authority that can be initiated by human factor. Are you seeing that? Yes. yes. This is why he makes the differentiation. Was the authority of John's baptism from heaven or was it merely human? So there are two sources that desire to have a sense of influence. It is either it is given by God. Or it is given by human beings. Now, human beings uh, can give fictitious authority because the authority that comes from human beings is not permanent. It is temporal. Toko Pamoja? Yes. Yeah, that's why he said, is, was it merely human? We want to make a distinction between that. Authority that comes from human beings is temporal, is not permanent. Okay? Its source is, is, is self-will. Most many times, what is defined as human will as, as authority from human beings proceeds from self-will. Okay? It's intention 
And now I'm going ahead of myself, getting excited. But here Jesus establishes that authority comes from heaven. Amen? Amen. They talked it over amongst themselves. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask us why we didn't believe him. You seeing the uh, are you are you seeing the logic of their musing amongst themselves? So it reveals the deception of their hearts. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse twenty six. But if we say it was merely human, we'll be moved because the people believed John was a prophet. So his authority was not temporal. It was permanent. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. So they finally replied, we do not know. And Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. Obviously, these guys were lying. Because if you remember in John's gospel chapter 3, a gentleman by the name of Nicodemus had come to Jesus by night and he was representing the Sanhedrin, the eldership, the religious leaders of the day. And this is what he said to Jesus. He was a Jewish leader, that's what the Bible says after dark. I'm going to paraphrase because I want to move quickly. This is what he said to Jesus. He said, teacher, we know that you are a man sent from God because no one can do these things except except God be with him so obviously these guys were lying because they knew the authority by which Jesus did the things he did are we together but because of their carnality their self-will they chose to remain mute and say they did not know. Toko Pamoja, we are going somewhere. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 1 and uh, I think verse 15 or 16. I said we want to teach the word. Amen. From verse 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, talking about Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. It's, this scripture does not imply that Jesus was born in, in, or was created. Okay, that's not what it implies. Is that he is the first of God's creation. Before creation came, he was. Okay? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones. Now thrones are established for the purpose of formulating policies, laws, decrees, statutes, commandments, and precepts. That's the purpose for the throne. The throne is a place for establishing policies kingdom policy are you with me yes. and dominions are established for the purpose of dispensing the laws the statutes the precepts the commandments that's what the dominion is there for if you remember the first time that the lord used the word dominion was in reference to adam okay the bible says let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them do what have dominion over all creation okay so dominions are established for the purpose of executing and also uh, releasing the rulership of what has been established as policy in the throne amen, amen. and then it goes on to say or principalities or powers all things were created by him now you've given me king james version i asked for the nlt all right there's a reason i asked for the nlt now such as thrones kingdoms dominions uh, rulers and authorities in the unseen world everything was created through him 
and for him. Let us, let us establish a very fundamental truth here, which is important. Now, these realms of jurisdiction, thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities, the Bible is very, very emphatic. These were created by Jesus through him and for him. Okay? So every kind of authority, power, whatever you call it, was essentially meant to serve Jesus. Nothing else. Are we together? They were created and designed to serve Jesus, to serve his purposes, to serve his will, his design, as he represents the Godhead. So, so the rightful usage of a throne or dominion or rulership or authority, it is when it is under the directive of the one who created them. Are you hearing me? When it is under the jurisdiction, the direction, and the instruction of the one who created it. So every kind of jurisdiction that operates in the earth, these are legal entities, okay, that are functional. But the, the reason why a lot of them are malfunctional is that they do not serve the one who created them. Because the Bible is very specific. It was created through him and for him. So our mission as a church is to restore these entities of power back to the rightful honor. That's the purpose for the church. Are you hearing me? Okay. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we preach reconciliation. Because ultimately, God intends everything to be reconciled back to him. The Bible says that he must rule and he must reign until the restoration of all things. Are we together? Yes. Are you following me? Yes. All right. So, having had said that, let us go on to certain aspects of what we want to speak to you about looking at authority. Now, Watchman Nee, in his book on spiritual authority, says these words, and I quote, he says there are essentially two principles that operate in the universe. There are how many principles? There are two principles that operate in the universe. And according to Watchman's Nee's deducement is that there is God's authority. There is what? Say it again. There is what? And then there is Satan's rebellion. Okay. There is God's authority and then there is Satan's rebellion. So it is either you are under the influence of God's authority or you are under the influence of Satan's rebellion. And uh, this is a reality in every sector of society. Wherever there is an entity, there's a body elect that exists. It's, you, you have two groups of people. You have those that are under the authority of God and they are those who are under the rebellion of Satan. 
why did Reverend Benjamin have to bring a poster here? All right. There are two principles that operate in the universe. God's authority. Remember, uh, Jesus posed a question when the elders, the religious leaders came to ask him a question. By whose authority he did these things. He asked them a question. The baptism of John. Huh? Where did it come from? The authority of John's baptism. Was it from heaven? Or was it from mere men? And when it comes from mere men, it is, sub, it is under the direction of satanic rebellion. This is why the Lord Jesus, are you hearing me? S mentioned these words to the religious leaders of his day. He said, you are of your father, the devil. Give me that scripture. You are of your father, the devil, and his works is what you do. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things it does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth. So anybody who resists the authority of God is resisting true authority. Resisting the truth. Niendele. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. And the Bible says he did not abide in the truth. God's authority. That's what Jesus was saying. Is that Satan did not abide in God's authority. When he mused within himself and said, I will ascend. I will ascend my throne and I will blah, blah, blah. According to Isaiah 14, he was not abiding in truth. Because he knew that authority comes only from God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So authority comes from submitting to God, the creator, and walking in obedience to him. That's the source of authority. Listening to him and following his instructions. In order, number one, to advance his will, To advance his purpose, number two, and to advance his design as it relates to creation. Have you, have you received that? You want me to say that again? Yes. Okay. All right. So authority comes from submitting to God the creator and walking in obedience to, his, to him listening to him and following his instructions in order to advance number one his will number two his purpose number three his design as it relates to creation now the other one comes from refusing to submit to God and choosing to disobey him rebellion is the attempt to advance an individual or a group's personal interest at the expense of violating God's known and revealed will. Rebellion is the attempt to advance an, indi an individual or a group's personal interest at the expense of violating God's known and revealed will. Now whilst we are talking about the will of God. The reason why a lot of people refuse to submit to the will of God 
is because God's will is not something easy. In the 40 years that I've been in ministry, I have come to learn that the will of God is not easy to submit to because often the human will is diametrically opposed to the will of God. Jesus in his prayer in Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nonetheless, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Because you see, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And we will describe what those phrases mean so that we can understand how it relates to rebellion. Okay. So rebellion is in essence violating God's known and revealed will by asserting a person or a group's position of power. Power. Notice I never use the word authority. Power. Remember the Lord Jesus in speaking about Satan uh, in, in Luke chapter number 10 when the disciples came back from the mission and they said the demons are subject to us. Jesus said do not rejoice over this. Okay, Rejoice rather that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then he says I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And then he said behold I give you power over what? Over Look, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. He doesn't use the enemy as having authority. He has influence. Okay, let me put it this way. Authority is delegated influence. That's what authority is. Satan has influence, but it's not delegated. God did not delegate that influence to the devil. It's something he assumed on his own. Amen? Okay? Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Okay. So that's what rebellion is. Is someone asserting a position or a group asserting a position of power outside of God's jurisdiction and prescribed order. I have so much to say to you because this is very beneficial for you, particularly with the way where God is taking you as a ministry and as a church. Because what God showed me was awesome. As I prayed for you and as I prayed for your pastor, prayed for the leadership. What I saw in my spirit was just so august. I will not say it here. By the way, those of you that listened to that pr prophecy that the Lord allowed us to prophesy over your pastor, now that you've heard, you have a responsibility to stand in the gap to pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So that's what rebellion is. Submission to God and walking in obedience to him is the source of genuine authority. Okay? We've already said this authority is basically delegated influence. That's what authority is. Okay? Authority is what? It is what? Say it again. It's what? You remember the centurion that Jesus encountered? Can you give me that verse? I think it's Matthew chapter 12, is it? Yeah, let's look at it. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him. Listen, okay? Let's go on. Lord, my young servant lies in bed paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my house. Okay, just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. Let's go down. I know this because I am what? That's what authority is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. You see, a man who has delegated authority does not need to be, to be a tyranny. Does not need to be tyrannical or to be dictatorial. Doesn't need to be a dictator. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. Those who are dictators are those who are operating under unwarranted authority. It's power. They have assumed power of their own initiative. Okay. Are we together? So now Jesus marveled at this man's level of understanding of how authority operates. So he says, your presence is not relevant. You have jurisdiction in a realm that I do not have jurisdiction in. And in this realm, all you need to do is just simply speak a word and the results will be produced. Because this centurion had followed Jesus for some time and saw how Jesus manifested the power and the glory of God. So he realized that this guy is under authority in the same way that I am under authority. So if he's able to heal the lame, the blind, and raise the dead, what is my servant's ailment? You are not hearing me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. I said submission to God and walking in obedience to him is the source of genuine authority. Authority is basically delegated influence. We say that rebellion, on the other hand, is influence that has not been delegated. It is not authority at all. Democracy is not of God. Whilst I'm here, whilst I'm on that, I've heard people say, uh, and this is the second time, that when, <laughs> and I'm not talking about Kenya, I'm talking about another nation. <laughs> when a candidate who is a Christian assumes the highest office in the land, I've heard people uh, compare that person to David. That's not true. That is a fallacy. Because that person came in through a democratic process. If it was truly by God's design, it would be under theo theocratic process. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So God does not govern through theocracy in the nation. His governance is in the church. That's why we must get this thing of authority very well. Because if we don't get it properly, we won't have influence in the government of the day. Are you hearing me? Okay. It was Queen Victoria who said of John Knox, that she feared his prayers more than all the armies of Britain put together. That's what she said, because he was a man who operated under authority. Have you heard of a man called Benson Idahosa? Yes. Do you know that the government of his day were under his influence? He could speak a word to the president and give directives. That's where I'm trying to take you to. Is that if you understand authority. Oh shakata. I feel like prophesying now. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Huh? Have you heard of a man, Idahosa? You know about Idahosa. Ah, Baba Idahosa. Yeah, I had the privilege to have fellowship with that man. Great man of God. Deep man of God. Hallelujah. He would speak during his time. Uh, presidents were at his mercy. There was one time a Muslim president gave some money to Muslims. Idahosa picked the phone and called him and asked him to do the same for the Christian community. And he said, if you don't, I will remove you from office. Now, when you understand authority, that has been delegated to you as Go Church. Oh, you're not ready for this level of revelation. When you submit yourself to that level of authority, are you hearing me? You are under the jurisdiction of your pastor, your leadership, and you are flowing together in sync in this vision. There is no telling what God can do with you. Have you heard of a man called T.L. Osborne? Okay, T.L. Osborne visited Uganda during the time of Milton Obote. And uh, he gave a book to Milton Obote and asked him to read this particular book and use it as a resource material huh? to help him govern uh, Uganda. He refused and T.L. Osborne released a word and he said, if you don't, your, your rulership will be short-lived. And not too long after that, Idi Amin toppled him. Do you know that history? There, there is authority. The church has authority. Now, if an individual can do that, what more of a collective body? Remember the last time that we were here, we were saying you can close the brothels, you can close the bars, you can stop prostitution, you can stop all kinds of evil vices. It comes by understanding how authority operates. Are you not ready for this? Maybe this is too... Maybe what you are ready for is for the pastor to prophesy and say, uh, next month, this time, you will receive a new Mercedes Benz. That's the level you want. I, th I, I don't think you are ready for the level of taking nations. No, 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 no. Are you ready? There's a price to pay. If you really want this level of entrustment and delegated influence. Yes. I know what I'm talking about. I know what God is able to do with people like you. It was David who brought the entire nation of the Philistines to their knees. And he was in his youth. You know, you don't understand the propensity, the, the, the ability, the power, the vigor, and the kind of trust and belief that God has in you. If you get this aspect of authority, Heaven will be open upon you 24-7. Are you hearing me? You will get invitations from a higher source of, of authority. Are you hearing me? Yes. Do you want this level? Yes. Do you want to take the nation of Kenya yes. back to God? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Or you are satisfied with just a handful of people being born into the kingdom. Are you ready for the nation? Are you sure? Well, raise your hand and say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready for this level. You can trust me, Lord. I will submit to your authority. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, refusing to submit to God and refusing to walk in obedience to him is to lack proper direction and purpose in life. 
You would think that you have direction. You would think you have purpose. But really it is a fallacy. It's a mirage. It's not real. It's short-lived. Let's go on. This is a book, by the way. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, God's authority and Satan or Lucifer's rebellion are not cohesive. They don't work together. Amen. I said every person on earth is either directed by... Now, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let, 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 me, let me go a few paragraphs before. The one operates, that is rebellion. Now, we are getting to the crux of the matter. The one that is rebellion operates uh, from a selfish disposition. Are you hearing me? Rebellion finds its source in selfishness. So whenever you do anything to satisfy, to appease the self-indulging nature, you are actually operating in rebellion. Can I say that? Whenever you do anything out of self-motive, or let me put it this way, self-will, outside the will of God, is rebellion. No matter how good it looks. Remember that uh, what attracted Eve to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not the evil in the tree, it was the good. The Bible says she saw that the tree was good and she ate. But it was not right because she was, because she was not delegated to eat that tree. So whenever you do anything out of self-will, selfish motives, are you hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you sure you're hearing me? Yes. Okay. If you get into a relationship out of self-will, oh my God, you're, you're not ready for this level. If you get into a relationship out of self-will to appease the self-indulging nature because everybody else is getting into relationships. It is rebellion. Are you hearing me? When you do anything, when you give a, a sacrificial offering and the motive is self-will, it is rebellion. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? Yes. Remember, remember Saul gave sacrifice and offering. Yes. But it was out of self-will. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. So anytime you do, and I want to stay on this. Anytime you, you do anything, no matter how good, how nice, how attractive, how beautiful <laughs> it seems and it looks and it appears. If the motive is the flesh, you are in rebellion. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. I want to show you something. Let's read from verse 21. I want to show you something. Are you receiving the word? Are you receiving the teaching? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Let's go to Matthew. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Now, let's look at... Uh, how Jesus defines it. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons. These were good works. In your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, 
you who break God's law. Other version says you workers of iniquity. Remember what God said of Lucifer in, uh, in, in, in Ezekiel 28. He says you were perfect from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. Iniquity is actually to get out of God's order. That's what iniquity is. It's actually a military term. Let me tell you what rebellion does. Let me tell you what rebellion does. You've seen, uh, it's a military term, that word iniquity. You've seen soldiers on parade, eh? yes. when they are under a commander who tells them, Ep I, Ep I, Ep I. You've, you've seen that, eh? Okay. Now, when God brought creation into motion, all right? And, 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 and brought Lucifer and all the angels and everything. Everything was under God's harmony. It was under God's rhythm. Okay? Are, are you with me? Everything was under God's rhythm. Under God's uh, sync. Symphonic. Now, uh, they were like marching to the order and the direction of the creator. Now, in the process, what Lucifer, I wish I could talk to you about the rebellion of Lucifer so you understand what really happened because God gave, it, gave this to me by revelation. Now, what Lucifer did was he changed the step. Are you hearing me? He changed the step and created disorder Okay, amongst the angels that were under his jurisdiction. So instead of maintaining the rhythm, left, right, it was right, left, right. So that whole trillion of angels. Are you with me? Yes. That's what iniquity means. To get out of order. Uh, let me have somebody come and sing a song here. Somebody come and sing a song. Okay? L l let me show you what it means. What, what iniquity is. C come and sing a song. Yeah, ju just any song. Any, any song. Give her the key. What song? Notice she followed the key, right? She followed the key and the beat. Okay, that's the rhythm. Okay, sometimes the singer is the one who starts and the musician follows suit. Okay, go on, sing. You Alpha and Omega. What key is that? Okay. Now give her D. Don't sing and D. Keep singing. Alpha and Omega. Do you see the distortion? That's what happened. Is that Lucifer introduced a completely different rhythm and key against what he knew to be truth are you ready for this yes. are you sure you're ready for this okay sing you are alpha give us sin yes you are alpha, alpha and omega. now drop it a key down we worship you alone no sing a different key we worship you our lord you are worthy to receive praise. That's iniquity. That's rebellion. So whenever, whenever you submit to the order of Lucifer, you are 
you are affecting not only yourself, but it acts as a cancer. It becomes leaven and it affects everybody else in the church. Remember Achan? Remember Achan? He went out of order. And when the people of God, the soldiers went to fight, what happened? They lost the battle because of one man. And God deals with iniquity very severely. Rebellion disturbs God's process. It disturbs God's order. Because God is a God of order and not confusion. And how did Lucifer introduce rebellion? He said, I, self-will, I will ascend. I will set my throne. I will be like the most high, self-will. So whenever you do anything out of self-will, you are actually operating in rebellion. This is why a lot of churches don't experience the power of God. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Yes. You are internalizing. Yes. yes. Okay. So rebellion is self-will. Now, thank you, my dear. Now God, God on the other hand, does not operate in selfishness. God as an entity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit function and operate on selflessness. That's why, this, that's why in Genesis 1, 20, 26, he said, let us create. God's nature is selfless. He does everything out of selflessness because he is a benevolent being. Are you hearing me? Because he's what? He's a benevolent being. So God has this disposition of always wanting to have an inclusion. Not an exclusion. Are you hearing me? So when he created us in Adam, he created us out of wanting to include us. Not to exclude us, to operate within his jurisdiction. We were meant to partake of his goodness. So God is selfless. That's how the Godhead operates. Give me John 17. Now, if you want to know the true value and meaning of life, you have to completely submit yourself to God in every area of your existence. Every area. If you really want to know the true value of life, submit yourself to the will of God. If you do that, you will live life so effectively with such accuracy, with such precision like Jesus did. The, the reason why Jesus never made an error or never made a mistake in his life is that his number one priority was to do the will of the Father. And he, he lived his life to the fullest. The reason why he was full of power is that he was fully submitted to the will of the Father. I said, give me John 17, verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When someone is driven by a self-indulging nature, it eventually leads to loss and destruction. So basically what we are saying is there is God's operative principle on which God's authority is established and there is Satan's operative principle that operates on rebellion. These two principles are contrary to one the other. Okay, let's validate 
Jesus, how he lived effectively. John 17 verse 1, after saying these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your son, so he can do what? He can give you glory, glorify you back. Let's go on to verse 2. For you've given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. Notice, notice Jesus' prayer. He says, who gave him authority? Who gave, who gave him authority? God the Father. And this authority was given to Jesus, delegated influence. Okay, and with this, he was able to give eternal life to each one. And, and okay, all right, let's go to verse three. Are we together? Let's go to verse four. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. He lived his life selflessly. Not in self-indulgence. This is the key to living a victorious Christian life. God has asked me to do things that were very hard for me at first. Because my will was saying otherwise. I remember the first time I had a, a, a debate and an argument with God for about an hour or so was when I was blessed with money that I'd never received before. I'd gone to the US for ministry. It was my second time to be in the US and God just f facilitated an opportunity for me to preach in a church that many people in New York desired to preach and I was blessed with man when I came back I received a phone call from the pastors fraternal and the, and the call was that they had invited a South African for a crusade and so they didn't have money in the coffers and they believed that I came with money I put the phone down when the man said that I put the phone down and uh, when he called again I put the phone down then the Holy Ghost began to talk to me and says what are you doing I said I'm protecting my investment because I had my own will and then God began to speak to me about releasing those resources from there on I've never had a problem to submit to the will of God not that things became better no are you hearing me Okay, when we went to South Africa, my wife left a very good paying job. Uh, she was a, a personal administrator to a managing director. In fact, at the time that we left, there was a minister of trade, commerce and industry who wanted her to be his PA at the time that we left. And so there were all these opportunities, but we chose the will of God. When we went to South Africa, it was not easy. We were persecuted, we were accused, uh, we were chased uh, from places, we were ostracized, we were displaced. It was not easy. Now, my background is that of accounts. That's what I am. And so, because we went through some very trying moments, I went to get a job. And, uh, and so as I began to attend to this particular job, there was an opportunity, by the way, in which I was to be uh, sent to go and open a branch of this particular company, and I was to run it as the branch manager. The third day when I went to work, I heard the voice of the Lord very audibly, and he asked me, what are you doing here? I told him, I said, Lord, I am earning a living. I've got bills to pay, and, and, and I'm a professional person. I have ability, I have skills. I cannot, I cannot be embarrassed and put to shame like this when I have a skill that I can utilize to generate revenue and income. And then the Lord began to talk to me. He said, he, he, God, God disregarded all that that I said. He's just simply said, what are you doing here? And I said, Lord, the Bible says if I do not provide. Yes, I said, your word says, if I do not provide for my household, I'm worse than an infidel. Then have you ever heard the audible voice of God? Don't ever put yourself in that place because everything about you will melt. Because the Bible says that the voice of the Lord thunders on many waters. Anyway, to cut a long story short, 
um, you know, I, I, I submitted to God. And in fact, the Lord said, oh, you're talking to me about my word. I know what I said. And so I left that place. Not that things became easy. You know, uh, we had uh, a bailiff come and attach some of our things. The will of God. But the reason why God didn't want me to take that job is because I wouldn't be here today. Are you hearing me? You see, God is a long-term thinker, not short-term. When it comes to the will of God, he's always looking at other benefactors, not just you. You see, if the cupbearer, are you hearing me? If the cupbearer had spoken favorably of Joseph to Pharaoh and, and Pharaoh would have released Joseph. The minute Joseph got out of prison, he would have gone back home at the expense of the entire land of Mesopotamia. But God kept him there for another two years at the right time at the right season was it easy for him in the jail no the will of God don't think God's will is easy it's not even when you get married it's not easy <laughs> do you want me to talk to you because you are bringing two people of two different temperaments personality uh, perception background and and everything else okay they are in uh, yes agenda they, they are importing what we call in psychology acquired behavior syndromes yes or behavior patterns you see when two people get married the woman is bringing her own perception of what the model of marriage should be. She's got it from her mother. The man also brings in his own perception of the model of marriage. So there's a clash. Apart from person. But because you, you differ and you argue, you have certain variations of looking at things, it doesn't mean that it was not the will of God. You have to work at it. You know, when I got married to my wife, the first couple of years, I used to think, hey, what's going on here? And I used to go to God and talk to him. Are you hearing me? Because we were different in every sense of the word. Hallelujah. So don't be in a hurry to get married. Are we together? Okay, let's wrap this up. My time is gone. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Let's wrap this up. Let me move quickly. Hallelujah. All right. All right. The Trinity operates on a selflessness nature. That's the basis of the authority of God. Are you hearing me? That's where God, as a tripartite being, has his authority. It's because they operate in unison on the basis and principle of selflessness. They understand one another's role without inter interfering or interrupting in those roles. In such unison that they support each other in agreement. I don't have the time to give you all the scriptures, but uh, there's so many scriptures loaded to that, to that truth. The submission of the Godhead is based on a selfless nature. God is selfless in nature. That's the source of everything that God is and does. If you understand this, you'll be liberated. Hallelujah. The church was brought forth into effect by God to reflect God's selflessness nature. That's the reason why we are born again. We are the conduit of God's authority. If you read the account of the early church, do you know why it had so much power 
and in fact the bible says that uh, within a short space of time the gospel had been preached to the entire region because they were selfless in nature in fact the bible says that they had all things in common except for wives and husbands they had all things in common in other words what the one had the other had if a couple had a house another couple had a house they had all things in common school fees were paid for nobody starved nobody had issues and when you read the word of god it says the lord added daily to the church such as needed to be saved and when you read acts chapter 5 i think from verse number 12 somewhere there and further down it speaks about how through the hands of the apostles signs and wonders and miracles were done okay and then the bible says that of the rest of the people none of them dared give me verse 13 but no one else dared to join them that is the disciples okay it sounds negative but then the next phrase is what qualifies even though all the people had high regard for them the church was not looked at cynically it was looked at with admiration and there were people who wanted to identify with the believers but they could not because when they considered who they were their characteristic they fell short so they could not come into church but today you have people who come into church and they are doing all kinds of evil vices and yet the bible says that the evil the wicked shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous but today we have witches we have sorcerers we have all kinds of people that feel comfortable in the church they are okay they can sit there and sit throughout the service we have people who are ministering the gospel who are in the pulpits but really their profession is that of witch doctors and they've realized that the only way they can make ends meet is to pretend to be preachers what has happened to the church it's because there is rebellion self-indulging nature are you hearing me church we want to get you to a place where you will hate selfishness hate the self-indulging nature the place for the self-indulging nature is crucifixion the place for the flesh that appeals to God is crucifixion it's death to the will do you know when you read the anointing that took place Samuel between Saul and David you notice in first Samuel just keep that scripture there in first Samuel I think chapter 10 somewhere there uh, when 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 Samuel anointed Saul the Bible says Samuel took a flask of oil are you with me now a flask is something that is man-made what we have today are man-made anointings man-made churches man-made preachers maybe give me here then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head he kissed Saul and said I'm doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler over Israel his special possession because it was the people's will this was a democratic process they wanted a king and they agreed democratically as a nation to be like other nations they said we don't want a prophet to rule over us when Samuel went to God God said just give them whatever they desire because it's not you they've rejected it is me and then Samuel told them the kind of king they would have he was going to put tribute on them he was going to be harsh and so forth now this was an anointing that was done in privacy between Saul and Samuel and it was a flask a flask is man-made material that's what we have today 
in a lot of churches we have man-made manufactured churches ministries pastors leaders who have not gone through the process in other words it is self-will selfishly driven and so we are not having impact in our community not anymore people do all kinds of wicked vices they come to church but they sleep around oh my god they come to church but they do all kinds of wicked things and it's acceptable and somebody can come to church and be comfortable in that place something is wrong there's a spirit of rebellion in the house of God but it is not going to be the narrative at Go Church did you hear what I say that's not going to be the narrative here we are of a different breed and of a different brand because we are cut from a different cloth hallelujah oh you see you're making me preach now we want to set a new standard we want to set a new we want to set new perimeters the narrative of this church will be different somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. we want when somebody who's demon possessed walks through that entrance the minute they walk through they will be like Sapphira and Aquila who when they walked in into a place that was fully charged with the Holy Ghost all that Peter did was he asked the question is this all the money that you have brought and 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 and, and, and Aquila said yes it is and and Peter said why have you connived with Satan to lie against the Holy Ghost Pooh, he was dead his wife came later you know what, what, what God was doing then he was cleaning up the self indulging nature he was protecting the move of God we want when somebody walks in there and they are full of self-indulging personality and nature they must fall under the power of the Holy Ghost we don't want we are not saying we don't want people to come but anybody who's otherwise should not be comfortable in this place I said anybody who is otherwise persuaded should not be oh I feel the Holy Ghost they should be slain under the power of the Holy Ghost we are changing the narrative that's why the whole theme of this ministry and work is ignite Kenya now if we are going to ignite Kenya we must exterminate we must sever we must come under the surgical operation of the Holy Ghost and allow him to sever any self-indulging nature in us. Selfishness must be laid at the cross. It must come to Calvary. We are not going to leave this place today until we have dealt death to the self-indulging nature. No more self-will because we cannot afford, we don't have the luxury of time. It's either you are in the kingdom or you are not. It's either you are with God church or you are not it's either you are with the vision of ignite kenya or you are not and it's not just an issue of saying i'm with you but this requires sacrifice praying burning the midnight oil in prayer staying late at night calling upon God and say Lord we need you to visit Kenya one more time like you did during the East African revival we want you back come back to East Africa 
We want to see the move of God that took place during the time of Bishop Kivenga. We want to see the move of God that birthed Pepha. We want to see the move of God that birthed people of Deliverance Church. Who's that man? What's his name? Apostle Kyle. We want to see the move of God. That birthed people like Benson Idahosa. We want to see the move of God. That birthed people like Bishop Isaiah Mbuga. We want to see the move of God. That birthed people, are you listening to me? Like Nicholas Bengo of South Africa. Do you know that Nicholas Bengo is the one who taught uh, Reinhard Bonke how to pray and how to deliver the sick? We want to see the move of God that raised men and women of God that walked in signs and wonders. I met a woman here who was used very powerfully in signs and wonders many years ago that God used her to raise the dead. I feel in my spirit that God is about to release the anointing in this place that is going to raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. But this will come with a promise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are tired of just playing church. It's not about having religious gymnastics. Every time we come out of here, we must lose something. Are you hearing me? Catherine Kuhlman was asked a question, what is the secret to the anointing and the power of God to heal the sick? She said, I die a thousand times every day. How many times do you die? We must get rid of a spirit of selfishness. Doing things because it pleases me. It's not about me anymore. Are you hearing me, church? Oh, I feel the anointing of God. I didn't want to preach. We need to have the power of the Holy Ghost return into this land once again. Yesterday, when I was preaching, before I went to preach, I lay down before God and I said, it's not about me. Oh God, it's, it's got nothing to do with Apostle Mutema. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm a dead man, Lord. I don't want to be visible. I want Jesus to be visible. And another man who was preaching the previous night, he said, this is your show. I said, no, sir, this is not my show. It belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am simply a conduit. I am simply a channel. It's got nothing to do with Mutama. God gave me a message about the woman with the issue of blood and God gave me a revelation and as the word went on and proceeded suddenly the power of God visited that place from the back people were being slain demons manifesting healings took place not because of me but because the king of glory was able to manifest because it was not about me oh I wish I could talk to somebody who's hungry for God. I wish I could talk to somebody who is willing to pay whatever it takes, whatever price. Authority. When you look at the anointing of David in 1 Samuel 16, the Bible, let's go to 1 Samuel 16 and I will close with this because we need to pray. There are certain people that the Lord told me to pray for. Sheke Bruta, Yaka Rabosita, raise your hands and begin to pray in the spirit for a little while and just surrender your heart, surrender your soul, surrender everything. Ebrosita, if you are in a wrong relationship, begin to surrender to the Lord and tell Jesus, oh God, oh God, I don't want to be an Akan in this church. I don't want to be a soul in this church. Tell 
tell him return, return, return to East Africa, return Holy Ghost, return, come back, come back, return, 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 begin with me, begin with me. Begin with me. You've planted me in the right place. You've planted me in the right church. I feel the wings of revival. I feel the wings of revival. My God, my God, my God. I feel the winds of revival. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the power of God in this place. I feel the winds of revival. I feel the winds of revival. I feel power in this place. I feel the winds of revival. Something is about to break loose in this place. Something is in the air, but it wants to enter you. I feel the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire. Hey! Shekere bobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobob
to stay in prayer you are willing to pay the price Samuel had prayed the whole night because it was about Israel listen to what God says about David don't quench the spirit 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 the spirit of God Kapala Soto Kebrosiata I'd like to, I'd like to move it to the next level but we want to keep it here with the Holy Ghost because we don't want people to be too overwhelmed. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 13, this is the Lord saying, it says, when he had removed him, that is so, he raised up for them David as king to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. Not some, but all my will. Now, the people that I want to pray with, that the Spirit of God told me, the first group are those you have an issue with authority at whatever level. Because whenever the issue of authority comes up or the issue of submitting to someone, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth because of your experience with those who had authority over you. I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to set you free. Because you had a bad experience with authority. Maybe with your father, your mother, your uncle, your sibling, whoever was your guardian. Maybe at school, the principal, your teacher. So whenever the issue of authority is, or oh, there's deliverance happening right now. There's deliverance happening right now. This thing is sitting in your soul. There's deliverance happening right now. There's deliverance happening right now. Deliverance happening right now. You are being delivered from that bad taste in your mouth. That thing that's been in your subconscious. Whenever the issue of authority comes up, you repel it, it repulses you, it repugnants you. Not here, not in this go church. Not here, authority here is delegated by God. Whatever we are doing here as go church is from God. So submit yourself, your tithes, your offering, your lives, your prayer time. There's deliverance. Anybody else who's had a bad taste with authority? The Lord told me, you need to be set free. Shebrita, it is in your soul. I release you in the name of Jesus. I loose you from your bad experience with authority. I release you from your bad experience with authority. In the name of Jesus, I release you from your bad experience with authority. In the name of Jesus, that authority that hurt you, that injured you, that broke you, that you don't trust anything to do with authority, I release you as God's servant and as a father who is submitted to godly authority. I lose you. Yes, there's deliverance. I release you as a servant of God. I release you from that experience. I release you from bad experience with authority in the past. I sever it in the name of Jesus. Be loose. Whoever hurt you, whoever injured you, 
injured you. You are being Hallelujah. I want to pray for a second group. You are here, you are willing, and you're saying, Lord. But then there have been some um, indications, some kind of resistance because of the self-will. Don't be ashamed. There's, a, there's enough for everybody. You want to say, I don't want to make decisions based on my self-will anymore. Just leave these people. God is at work. Do you feel the Holy Ghost in this place? manifest glory of God you see when the glory of God comes what happens is you begin to see creative miracles in the name of Jesus now I want to pray for those of you that are submitted yes be set free saying I 
have no problem. I understand what authority means. In fact, I've understood today. And you're saying, I want to give myself to the will of God and to surrender no matter the price. There is no place that you are safest in than the will of God. I want to pray for the leaders. Sorry? Yes. The leaders. The leaders. The leaders. I will pray for you later. Okay. This is between you and God. I am just a conduit. Talk to him. There's an open heaven here. Tell him, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my will. I surrender my perceptions. I surrender. I'm saying yes to your will as a leader, Lord. Whatever you have in store for us as a ministry, just say, Lord, I surrender. I submit myself to the leadership that you've placed over me. I surrender. Come and talk to him. Something is going to come upon you. Shikabarasa. I don't have to. Something is going to come upon you. As you release, as you release, God feels you. As you release yourself, God feels you. As you release yourself, my God, my God, the capacity to be able to carry this grace and this anointing is coming upon you. The capacity, capacity, I hear capacity. God is enlarging your capacity. God is enlarging your ability. He is enlarging your spirit. He is enlarging. There's an enlargement that is taking place. An enlargement. Some of you feel like you are exploding. That is God. God is pleased with your sacrifice. God is pleased with your willingness. Capacity. I'm increasing capacity. 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 Increment. Capacity. 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 Work with me. Work with me. Ashes. Work with the Holy Ghost. Capacity. 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 The capacity that God gave me. According to your ability, according to the level of your submission and surrender, God is increasing that capacity. According to your level of submission to his will, to the will of this work, capacity. for capacity. Grace for increased capacity. Grace. Grace for increased capacity. Grace for increased capacity. I'll come to you later, sir. Grace for increased capacity. Yes. Grace. Oh, I'm enlarging your heart, my daughter. Say the Lord. I'm enlarging, I'm expanding your heart. I'm enlarging your horizon and I'm expanding your territory. I'm causing borders to open up for you and I will be glorified in you, saith the Lord. I delight in your humility, your submission and your sacrifice, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm increasing. I'm increasing and enlarging you beyond the borders of this nation. In the Rabosita. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can I lay hands on you? Can I put my hands on you? Can I do that yes. with your permission? Thank you, Father. Lord, you have already called, anointed, appointed, and set your servant apart. God, I lay my hands in agreement and Lord, as a sign of conferring this new level of grace in Elijah's capacity, Lord, to be able to handle the leadership, Lord, that you've given to him and uh, let him be able, Lord, to contain this grace. Thank you for the anointing, for elevated anointing, for increased anointing. As he leads, Lord, oh God, I thank you that you will be with him like you were with Moses. Thank you, Lord. Your next assignment is to raise leaders in this work and ministry. Leaders that are going to be after your spirit. Leaders that you are going to send who are going to pastor churches. You are going to plant churches of this same nature and this same flavor and this same stature. You are to raise those leaders. Some of them will receive transfers into locations. Others you will have to send. This is how you are going to ignite Kenya. Because God is raising a ministry of a different stature. That's why he called you from Uganda. We've never met. We only met in, in Kisum. But there were some things the Lord was saying to me when I heard them. I said, okay, Lord, if you want us to be part of what you are doing in that work, we will receive an invitation to go and minister. That was my condition. Because we want to be part of the birthing of the new season. Mm. Now this grace was given to someone else but they abrogated because they became self-indulged. And I heard the spirit say, tell Benjamin that I've appointed him and I've anointed him to raise leaders because the contemporary church has lost it. <clears throat> Raise leaders, train them. We'll be part of that. If you want us to be part of that, let us know. But you have a very huge task because time is normal with us. We've played church for too long. It's an entrustment in the name of Jesus to raise leaders, pastors. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Something broke in this place. Why don't you lift your hands and just give thanks to the Lord. 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 Thanks to the Lord. Oh, I feel that uh, the flesh has been broken. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Benjamin, I, I, I think the oil has been poured out. 